I'll pray. We'll start. Our Father in heaven, we uh, we feel our. I feel my need this morning. Uh, it's my hope that we all do. So, in response to what we desire, give it to us. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a friend of mine. Yeah, I got a little video, a short video clip of from this young man. He's a very good friend of mine. Uh, we worked together in the refugee camp in Kenya. Who'd like to read? Anybody can read this one. Are you all show and no suspects? Yeah, John the Baptist did not beat the Romans up. <clears throat> he beat up the Jews. He told Herodias, you have taken your brother's wife. I'm sorry, he told uh, Herod, you have taken Herodias, brother Philip's wife. You know, because John the Baptist was not style, he was what? Substance. People that bash the church and bash the Pope, people love to go to those meetings because they never address the personal sin in their life and they love to go to a bashing party. It's all style and there's no substance in it. But when the man turns and directs his, uh, what he sa says to your personal sins, then everybody rises up against him. William Miller was all substance and no style, just like John the Baptist. D.L. Moody, you ever read, read yes. something? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, they're going to lynch that man. Uh, he was all substance, not much style. So you can get on the president's plane this morning. Yeah, back to that little thing. You can dress a burger and fries up right in the presidential wardrobe, but it's still junk food. It's all style and not a lick of substance. And that's true, isn't it? Now, here comes Jesus. And the people said, he is ugly, right? Mm -hmm. Isaiah 53, verse 2. Uh, the rest of the verse says, he is a root out of dry ground. Sister Leah, you want to start by reading? He had no beauty or majesty that would attract us. Easy. Couldn't see it. Looked at him, saw it's all ugly, mm -hmm. right? Cast will blind you. Yeah, we're spending like six hours on this. I'm sorry. Cast will blind you first to men and then to God. You can't see either one. I see men as what? Luke 8, 24. Yeah, I see men, and he looked up, and I see that's trees walking. What he needs is some glasses. Now, you want to read something that's very interesting. I mean, very, very interesting. Now, Ryan, this is two groups of people looking at the same thing. One saw night, and one saw day. The afflicted, suffering ones who saw Christ as the helper were charmed with the divine perfection, the beauty of holiness, that shone forth in his character. But the Pharisees could see no beauty in him that they should desire him. His simple attire and humble life, the void of all good show, rendered him to them as a root out of dry ground. They're looking at the same thing. Look at the same man. What made the difference? One looked at the substance. Amen. The other looked at the outer appearance. That's it. Our subject this morning with the hammer that breaks down the cast, health evangelism. <laughs> Sister Nicole, you want to read that one? Is your message empty? Mm -hmm. Yeah, now your message is empty, you finish the sentence. If you're That's it. Empty. That's it. And you can strive with all your heart to try to say something that has substance. You'll never do it if your message is empty because you're empty. You're empty. I want to read this one. This is a, this is a tough, tough thing to read for me. I read this because I believe these when I read them. You know, if you don't believe it, it's okay. It's not tough, right? But if you believe it, it is not orthodox theories, not membership in the church, not the diligent performance of certain round of duties that gives evidence that you're alive, right? Of life. In an ancient tower in Switzerland, we read this, you know, months ago, but this morning it came back to my mind. In an ancient tower in Switzerland, I saw the image of a man that covered, uh, that moved as if it possessed life. It looked like a living man. And I whispered when I came near, as if it could hear me. But though the image looked like life, it had no real life. It moved by machinery. Motion is not necessarily life. Because you move does not mean you live. In Him we live, move, and have our being. In Him, 1728 of Acts, but because you move does not mean you live. We may go through all the forms and ceremonies. Now, pause. If you're married to a robot, would you know it? Yeah. Why? Uh, well, wait, wait a minute. No, whoa, 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 whoa. If you're married to a robot, would you know it? Yes. Going through the motion. 
we may go through all the forms and ceremonies of religion. A robot does what? Yeah, it does whatever you tell it to do. Whatever you program it to do, it will do. It's all style and no substance. Uh, we may go through all the forms and ceremonies of religion, but unless we are alive in Christ, our work is worthless. Theology, unless it's saturated with the love of Christ, is yesterday worthless. Yeah. Well, how do you get a heart? How do you come to life? It's easy. By getting an experience. Now, back to Isaiah 58. 58 verse 7. Remember what it said? You can even paraphrase it. You can read it. Isaiah 58, 7. Because verse 8 says, now you come to life. The experience is in verse 7. Life is in verse 8. Who will read verse 7? And then your light will <laughs> spring forth like the dawn. Yeah. That's how you get an experience. It's not... Now, what is that? But I guess it's... Mm -hmm. sort of no, go ahead, no, go ahead. It's, I see even righteousness by faith in that because you're doing something that's so simple. Yeah. But you have to have faith to believe that the light will break forth. Yeah, amen. You're not doing it because you want that, but you're doing it by faith. Amen. This, yeah. This is not something like so special to say, like, you know, it's just taking care of people. That's it. This is a simple way to say it. Just take care of folks. The priest and the Levite, they missed the experience. Their health did not spring forth, did not break forth like the dawn because they did not get the experience of what? Taking care of people. If you want to get a deep spiritual experience, find somebody incontinent and clean up their diapers. Yeah. That's it. You go to a leper colony, you know. If you want an experience, that's how you get one. Anyway, what is, what is that a picture of anyway? Silverfish. No. It looks like a silverfish. It's a crayfish? No. It looks like a like crayfish a little bit. A fish rail? No. It looks a little like that. Bait. <laughs> it looks like that. It's not. No. The reason you don't know what it, it looks like that, the reason you don't know what it is, is because you probably have never seen one bigger than that. Because that is a, rhymes with that, that is a gnat. gnat. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's so, uh, yeah, and without a personal experience, you strain at gnats. And this is why people imbibe these conspiracy theories. They've got no personal experience. They strain at a gnat, you know. These things keep churning into my computer. Oh, I just think, I just, I, can't, I believe this thing. I believe this thing. I just hit delete, delete, delete. I won't tell you what I got last night. Mercy. I said, how can this man believe this? He is straining at a gnat. The thing in our life right now is sin. To beat up the Romans will not get us a, a, a jot or tittle closer to Christ. You blind guides, you strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Uh, without a per personal experience, you're just training at gnats. Now, think carefully. Habakkuk 2, verse 4. The just shall live by his faith. Now, Oliver. The enemy of our work is pleased when a subject of minor importance can be used to divert the minds of our brothers from the very question that should be the burden of our message. Yeah, I'm going to divert you. Let's talk about what the Pope's coming to the USA. <laughs> and then is he going to break loose, right? Mm -hmm. My friends, your sins need to be going to the sanctuary, not the Pope going to Washington. Mm -hmm. And people gather and they love to hear that kind of tripe. Because yep. there's no substance in their soul. And it feeds their ego. Instead of dying to self, you live for self. Because thank God I'm not like him. Now, is this present truth? Is it beautiful? Is it a net? Is it a minor issue? No. Okay. Now, two perspectives. There's Jesus, there are the Pharisees, there are the sick folks. The sick folks saw beauty, the Pharisees saw ugly. If you are a crack addict, hadn't had a meal in four or five days, do you want to study on righteousness by faith or do you want a hamburger? If you have Ebola and are getting ready to die, what's the first thing on your list? 
Get better. Yeah, it's to get better. If you're hungry, first thing on your list. Mm. Now, let me give a starving man a Bible study on Daniel 2. Uh -huh. Let's have a picture of one. Now, Habakkuk 2 4 to him is a minor issue. He wants something, it's not a Bible study. He even wrote it down. <laughs> what does he want? My, Matthew 9, verse 36, he looked upon the masses and was moved with compassion. compassion. Jesus said, first things first. And so did James, his brother. This is not written by James, the brother of John, written by James, the brother of Jesus. He got it. Took him a while to get it, right? <laughs> it took, him, took him a little while, but he got it. And, uh, and James is writing, look. Be warmed and be filled with this Bible study. Sister Nicole, you want to read it from the top? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, verse 17, if it hath not, Works. is dead. Yeah, dead people walking around. It's all substance, but no. Stuff, no style. So let's take this little all statement style, here. All style, all style, no stuff. Well, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. You, you straighten me out. Help me out. You're Biberian. There is everywhere work to be done for those who, through intemperance, have fallen. It's everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Men speak of these erring ones as hopeless. Evidence you do not know God. That's evidence. Romans 8, 24, we're saved by hope. Hope is the substance, 11, 1 of Hebrews, of things hoped for. You don't know God. If you think like that, you don't know God. Now, you think you have hope for yourself, but not for, not for anybody else. I mean, that's what, didn't know, that's, what, that's what a dead man thinks. I can come to life, but they can't. Mm -hmm. Men speak of these erring ones as hopeless. Next question. What makes them so hopeless? Because you can see yourself through them. Yeah. Because when you look at somebody, all you can see is what? The outside, and every comparison is made. You're outside with theirs. And diet, exercise, uh, administration, recreation, music, the dress, everything, that's all outward. Those are dictator genes. You don't got a choice. As far as the outside, what you do with the outside, you can choose. You say God can't help them. God can't help them to choose a different way. Yes, He can. How do I know? He got me out of the beer joint. And ex Thank you. You're two steps ahead of me. And experience. What? People who have those experiences, they do. We do that. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. We lost sight of our experience. Yeah, or? amen. My dear brother Ryan, you're two more steps ahead of me. Can you get an experience and then what? Forget it. Forget it, lose it. Yes. Or can you get an experience and not really yeah. embrace it? Yeah. You take the healing, but not the... You love the gift more than you love the yeah. giver. Were there, uh, Luke 17, were there not... Where are the other nine. nine? They got the healing, but they were still dead. <laughs> so uh, men speak of these erring ones as hopeless, but not so does God regard them. I say praise the Lord. He understands. Now this limits us because we don't understand. Anybody in the room, I'll take anybody, anybody. I use, I use Oliver. When I see Oliver, I see Oliver the way he is no. now. If he had an objectionable trait, he doesn't. He's Brother Sunshine, right? You agree, right? Yes. Oliver's <laughs> Brother Sunshine. There's, there's no gal in that man, Luke, John 147. He's just, he's Brother Sunshine. But if he had an objectionable trait, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six, or 20, and there's no hope for him. When I see him, all I see is these negative traits. But when Christ sees him, from the moment he was born until now, Christ sees every circumstance, every difficult situation, every distressing event that made him what he is now. The Lord sees. Thank you. You're four steps ahead of me. The class is running ahead of me today. He sees what Oliver was, and then he sees what he can be, the potential. All we see is what this, the eye of faith, sees what he can be. And I say, there's no hope for him. <laughs> you got no faith. And if you don't have faith, you are dead. 
He understands all the circumstances that have made them what they are. And you may not understand me, but the Lord understands why I'm such a mess. <laughs> Aren't you glad? Yeah. And he looks upon them with, ah, oh, I love it, I love it. Does the Lord care for my soul? Yes. Oliver, you want to read the rest? <laughs> this is a class. This is a class that the man tells. That the man tells. Never give them a picture to say, you know, I'm care for my soul. Never let him say that. Never once. Never. Okay, it's so simple. And you start talking about the simplicity of it all. I cut my foot on a gate in Russia. I couldn't walk for two weeks. I cut my, my ankle. The, the gate closed my ankle, cut me. I couldn't walk for two weeks. A doctor came. She's a Russian doctor. Couldn't speak a lick of English. And somebody told her I cut my foot. This is a deep cut. She's, come on, you know, let's see your foot. And I, it was the back of my ankle. I held it up. She said, and she went to her bag, brought back this little bottle of red stuff. And she says, okay. And then I thought, this is going to burn. And this is what she did. She got it out. And then uh, she got my ankle and put it on and then started <laughs> blowing on it. <laughs> Whoa, that's good, isn't that good? So what? Simple. It's so simple. Now, 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 when God sees this man, all right, is this man an abomination in the eyes of God? No, no way. When God sees the Pharisee, I will what? Mm. Work for salvation. That is an abomination in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. Ryan, you want to read it? A legal religion can never lead souls to Christ, for it is a loveless, Christless religion. Fasting or prayer that is actuated by a self-justifying spirit. Altogether is an abomination, abomination in the sight of the Lord. Lord. Keep going, Ryan. <laughs> the solemn assembly for worship, the round of religious ceremonies, the external humiliation, the imposing sacrifice, proclaim that the doer of these things regard himself as righteous. Here it comes. And as entitled to heaven. heaven. But it is all a deception. Our own works can never purchase salvation. As it was in the days of Christ, so it is now. The Pharisees do not know their spiritual destitution. To them comes the message. Because well, wait, wait, wait. That, that's a mistake. Mrs. White made a mistake. That's not a Pharisee. That's, that's us. Wait a minute. Heart be still. <laughs> now let's bash the Romans. But don't you bring that into this classroom. It's us. It's us. It is Leah. It is Ryan. It is Oliver. It is Barbara. It is Nicole. It is Renee. And it is you. Thank you. Well said. <laughs> well said. Well said. Keep going. <laughs> Because thou seest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. We'll work for salvation. Can you see that first slide again? Sure. Yeah, this is, this is a kind of interesting little thing because because it's a setup, right? God set us up. We're just we're just ready just to say those Pharisees are going to hell, and then she said, "It's you." <laughs> now it's like Nathan, right? Da 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 da. Thou art the man. Whoa, yeah, it's me. It's me. Now back to the Bible, back to the church, back to the Bible, back to the church. This is what the Lord, the injunction for health evangelists, right? Go on out, bring them into the house. All right, uh, Sister Barbara, read. Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come okay, in. Okay. This Christ's command, that my house may be filled. Luke 14, 23. He brings men into <clears throat> touch with those whom they seek to benefit. Now, we, we exhausted that last part. Now we go back to the middle part. Bring them into my what? <clears throat> house. The Lord has a house. We call it the house of the Lord, the Lord's house, right? He has a house. Came to pass, as Jesus said, at meet in the house. <laughs> that was the Lord's house. When he's in the house, it's the Lord's house. Mm -hmm. The problem is the pimps and the whores were in there too. And the Pharisees said what? No way. I'm not going into that house. I'll stay in my house. There are only two houses. Only two. The Lord's house or your house. Or your house. 
He wants to make your house, I stand at the house and knock, his house. And it came to pass. Now, the natural response to love. I mean, somebody gives you, gives you something, right? They give you a big old piece of uh, cheesecake. <laughs> What's the natural response? Come on, be honest. The natural response is what? Thank you. Yeah, thank him. You want to, when you receive, you want to what? You want to, you want to share the blessing. Matthew, Matthew 9, verse 9, following Matthew rose up and followed him, and Matthew did what? Through a party. Why? He want to share the blessing. And he just got hooked up. He got unhooked from the IRS, got hooked up to Christ. He had a party, right? And it came to pass, as Jesus said at meeting house, did Jesus go to the party? Yes. Publicans and sinners came too, right? And sat down with his disciples. Now, that's not the problem. The problem is us, uh, Sister Renee. Now, this is us. Don't say them the Pharisees. No, this is us. The Pharisee said to Jesus' disciples, Why does your, your te teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. He just renamed it. His house is now called the doctor's office. <laughs> who goes in? The sick, the sick folks. And if you're well, they stay in your house. Why? Would, I don't go to the doctor today because I'm not sick. Why go? But if the Lord set up his house, now it's the doctor's office, what should I do? Go. Because a hernia is not, does not need fixed today. It was fixed yesterday. But sin needs fixed. And 6 1 Corinthians 15, 31, and every day. So this is kind of a, in a way, it's not a, it's not a good picture. But if you don't know you're sick, you don't know you need a doctor. Laodicea. So John the Baptist turned his sights on Herod and he said, you're a sick man. And Herod reluctantly said, you're a dead man. He would not be healed. And it's not a good picture, but it sure makes the point. The God, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, the God of this world hath blinded, blinded who? Them that which believe not. Yeah, yeah. Now, I could use myself, but I'm ashamed to use myself in this one. I'll use somebody else. I'll badmouth somebody else instead of badmouthing myself. I was in a meeting once talking about where we're going to put schools. I was in, I was, you know, this, this is a while back. Where we're going to hold these schools. And a person in that meeting said, better to hold the school outside the university so that way we can get a high caliber of students. No, dear friends, better to hold the school outside the whorehouse or the jail. Then you get the kind of students that will learn. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus did. That's what he did. Yeah, we're not looking for pigmentation or educational attainments. We're looking for a heart that's willing to receive. Now, remember, two classes. One saw Jesus. Man, that guy's ugly. Priest. Lawyers, scribes, Pharisees. The other, yeah, the other class looked at Jesus. Man, that's a, that's a good looking man. <laughs> I need what he has. Who are they? Prostitutes. Yeah. Fishermen. Yeah. Fishermen. yeah, that's him. Now, um, again, a good friend of mine. I think Something is wrong. Something's wrong. I'm trying to connect because. There's this class, I'm not saying that all of them, but there's this class that has intellect, and there's this class that doesn't have nothing. Why does the class that doesn't have nothing can see their sickness rather than the class that is so intellectual? Is it their intellect? Is it... I wouldn't want to say. I, yeah, I got ideas, but uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm mum on this subject. But we see something is wrong. There's a disconnect. Now, I want to show you a short video clip of this guy named Andy. Uh, there is a counterfeit Christianity in the world as well as a genuine Christian Christianity. We know that, right? You got, you got the uh, beware of the, the, the wolf in sheep's clothing. The true spirit, ah, you want to know what a man's really like? It's the way he treats the people. That's it. Now you take the lowest, basest, foulest human being on the earth, right? And that person 
may not be in the class. <laughs> okay. And the way you treat that person is the way you treat Christ if he were here. Yeah. yeah. Matthew 25, 40, as you do unto one least as my brethren, that's how you treat me. Why kid yourself? Yeah. That's how you would treat God if he were here. How do I know? 25, 40 of Matthew plus that. You spot Christian, counterfeit Christianity in the way they treat you. The way you treat the untouchable in India is the way you would treat Christ if he were here. Now, I thought about Andy. This was uh, the lady interviewing him. His interview is on the, this lady that's interviewing him was a physician working part of the group. He invited me. That's why I went. He was a student at Wildwood Hospital. I was teaching one of the classes he took. And I said, uh, yeah, if you, I like mission work, health evangelism, da 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 he said, yeah, if you ever got a project going, call me, and he did. <laughs> so he said, we're going to the refugee camp, want to go? And you know the story behind that. So the lady there was interviewing the, the people that went. And this is her interview with Andy. I took out 40 seconds. Listen to what he said. And um, what challenges have been there so far? Um, my biggest concern was actually security. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, um, we've been sleeping with the refugees, uh, there is exposure to all sorts of things, um, but the love that we've experienced from the, the community has just, it's something beyond what I could ever imagine. The first day we came here we had our feet washed, uh, we, they've been pleading for us to give us our laundry to wash, they've been cleaning our rooms. Um, uh, with the little they have, they've shown so much love. They've mm. shown Christ's love, actually, towards us, mm. with little or no words. Mm. Though there's a language barrier, their actions have clearly demonstrated the love for Christ that they have. Because, you know, we can't love Christ if we can't even, or if we don't even love our, our fellow, you know, human beings or yeah. our neighbors. Matthew 25, 40. subject today is health evangelism. It's the people inside the house, the sick ones. Um, by the way, had they come to the right place? Oh yes, <laughs> you're a pimp, come on in. You're in the right place. The Pharisees said, that's the wrong place for me. His example, and now if you have not read this statement, this is the best thing I've ever read on how to work with unbelievers. When invited, as his work commenced, to a dinner or feast by Pharisee or publican, he accepted the invitation. Jesus gunned down there and wallowed in the mud with them pagans. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, dear friends. He went down there to pull them out of the mud. Now, to pull somebody out of the mud without driving them deeper into the mud, that, that is, I, Oliver and I were talking about it yesterday, right? That is hard, is, that's hard, that's, that's hard. On such occasions, well, that's it, control. he took control. Go ahead and read it, Ryan. On such occasions, Christ controlled the table talk. Yeah, a lot of people miss that, now they talk about the first part, he controlled the table talk. Now, next question, how in the world, what gave him control of the table talk? You gotta read carefully and gave many precious lessons. Mm. Those present, present sorry, listen to him. Why? For had he not healed their sick, comforted their sorrow, taken their children in his arms and blessed them. <laughs> Publicans and sinners were drawn to him, and when he opened his lips to speak, their attention was riveted on him. Christ taught his disciples how to conduct themselves when in the company of those who were not religious and those who were. And that's a lesson. We need. That's a lesson. Mm -hmm. We need that. We need that. Because I'm, I'm sitting here listen, looking at this and I'm trying to put myself in that place and I know Amen. my heart is not there. Amen. And I don't know how to conduct myself in a certain company yeah. because I'm not comfortable. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. As well, Oliver yesterday. Oliver and I were talking about being balanced, and I know I'm not, but I want to be. I mean, I want to be. You read this, and hopefully it kindles a desire to be that way. But you notice there, uh, he, they listen because he met their needs. Yes. He healed their sick. Yeah. That's why he did medical missionary yeah. before. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now, the 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 10-star thing that I think if we miss, we miss the whole thing. Not that I'm smart. But if we miss it, we miss the whole thing. That crowd he was with were not the religious type. It didn't matter. It, he was not hindered by their lack of religion. I'll read it. He taught his disciples how to conduct themselves in the, in the company of those who were not religious. That kind of crowd, no religion, no hindrance. Health evangelism. Wow. Respectable sins. <laughs> well, now, okay. The, the, the caste system, right? You're a child molester. You're a pimp, a prostitute. You're a, you're a, you're a pedophile. No good. <laughs> I'm a Wall Street lawyer. Just happened to get caught on a down day. I'm okay, right? Respectable sins. Brother Oliver. He who falls into some of the <laughs> grosser sins with a sense of his shame and poverty and his need of the grace of Christ. But pride feels no need. And so it closes the heart against Christ and the infinite blessings he came to him. Now I wrote this. Oliver, you want to read the next one? I wrote the next one. This is not inspired. Pride, the great yeah, if you don't know what carbon monoxide is, o odorless and tasteless. In the old days before catalytic converters, if you wanted to take your life, you put your mouth on the exhaust pipe. It was a painless way to die. Catalytic converters, now it's changed yeah. the picture. Yeah, it's, you can't taste it. It's odorless, taste is invisible. You don't see it. see your need. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it was only America and I said, take the Chinese for an example. All right. Chinese are angry because of the, they caught the pimps and the prostitutes and uh, this is what they did with them. A part of a two month crackdown on vice in the booming city of Sichuan, public security offers hold about a hundred women and some of their male uh, customers through the streets <laughs> on November 29. We're going to teach them, uh, handcuffed and wearing bright yellow prison tunics, people in the parade attracted large crowds of curious onlookers. Now, here's the problem. <laughs> Never mind, I won't say it. All of the women tried to cover their faces with a surgical mask. This is before the pandemic, too. It was not enough to hide their identities because police revealed their names, hometowns, and dates of birth while publicly sentencing them all to 15 days in prison. My dear friends, that is caste system according to crime. It's everywhere. 323 of Romans, how many have sinned? All. We are all, I wrote the bottom part, we are all criminals. But I'm not as criminal as you. <laughs> yeah. We'll put you in a yellow jumpsuit, run you down to downtown Atlanta, and publish it in the Atlanta Journal, everything about you. Uh, you won't catch me doing that. I mean, let me be, be honest. Let's take, a, let's take somebody that steals a paper clip out of the office. That's a crime. Now, she ought not steal. Doesn't matter how small or how big. It's still a sin. A little sin will keep you out of heaven as much as a big sin will. You need forgiveness for both, right? You kill somebody, the good news is, now you flip it. I kill somebody, I didn't steal a paper clip, and there's still hope for you. Uh, you stole a paper clip, you stole a paper clip, I kill somebody. The Lord said, what? Come on, both of you, come into the house. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I only stole a paper clip. Yeah, I can't go. It's just caste system by crime. No, 1880 Sister Renee, no, 1880 materials. God enjoys upon us to guard the reputation of our fellow believers in the hardest field, as we desire our own mm. reputation to be guarded. Ah, it's the golden rule, right? That's the golden rule. So if somebody does something wrong, who do you tell? Yeah. Nobody. And if you say, what's the best, now outside of Christ, outside of Christ in the Bible, the best example that comes to my mind is when Joseph found out his wife was pregnant. I mean, I'm sorry, before they had a relationship, not married, right? His wife turned up, his, I'm sorry, fiance turned up pregnant. 
The birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when, he, when, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, engaged to be married, before they came together, had a sexual relationship, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And Joseph said what? I'm going to guard that woman's reputation. I read the next verse. Sister Lee, you want to read? I mean, I read this thing. I thought, what? And Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. What's that word privately mean? Secretly. Yeah, privately, secretly. What was he doing? Living the golden rule, guarding the reputation of Mary. That's the kind of man that God put Jesus, the Father put the son in that kind of household. That's it. Guard your reputation. But God does the same thing to this, but... Oh, sure he does. Sure he does. Sure he does. And so uh, I'll read it one more time. And uh, before I read it, it's the sermons and the satellites do not play well in the subway in Harlem. Hmm. What does? Health evangelism. <laughs> That's it. Health evangelism. So, uh, in closing, uh, who hasn't read this so much? And this is Barbara, you read? Okay. Through direct contact, through personal ministry, the blessings of the gospel are to be communicated. That's it. Mm -hmm. I will pray. Our Father in heaven, we, we see something that's not right and uh, don't know how to, uh, how to straighten it out completely. But I see something. I need you to change my heart, to remove this caste system thinking from my soul and help me to be like you. And I suppose my fellow brethren here will take part in this prayer also. So give us grace, please, to understand heaven, heaven's plan and to see as heaven sees. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.